top three dating mistakes, you know, of all the mistakes that we can make, <laughs> let's look at why these are the top three. Thank you for tuning into Second Act TV. Happy that Bob Grant stayed over for another segment talking, well, dating over 50 and what women need to know. <laughs> Bob, thank you so much for, for being here again. Thanks, Mike. It's nice to be here. Yeah. Well, Bob, uh, if you haven't seen him before, he is the founder of Relationship Headquarters. He is a relationship expert. And you had an article up on your on your site that I thought was very interesting. It's it's uh titled top three dating mistakes mm -hmm. to avoid i'm thinking top three these are interesting let's let's look at you know of all the mistakes that we can make <laughs> mm -hmm. let's look at why these are the top three and incidentally this does affect both men and women we we both can learn from this so let's talk about the first one Oversharing. This is a word that, well, we hear this a lot, but what exactly is oversharing and why is it such a huge mistake? So when, when folks overshare, they tend to confuse the idea of transparency with being you know, open and being uh, have a connection with someone. So transparency was pro I pretty much share whatever I'm thinking in the moment and I lose track of the other person. So I get caught up in what I'm talking about, what I'm saying, I love the sound of my voice. I love my story. And I'm not paying attention to the fact that your eyes are glazing over or you're politely nodding, even though you've gotten the point. And see, we're not connecting. I just feel good because it feels really great to hear the sound of my voice. We all do this. So if I share a certain amount, really what I'm trying to do is give the person just enough and then see if they want more. And that's where the vulnerability comes in. Mm -hmm. Because they're, mostly I talk with women, so I realize is that if I'm sharing, the fear is if I stop, I won't have anything else to say, or he might not say anything, or see, I don't know what's gonna come next. But that vulnerability is really what's much more appealing than me continuing to share and share and share and keep my anxiety at bay as I continue to talk. Yeah. I think one of the things to really point out here too is, is the topics that we tend to fall into, in, you know, in oversharing things that you really shouldn't talk about, especially in, on a first date, <laughs> you know, uh, talk to me about that. What are some of the common topics to stay away from? So anything that gets too much too fast. So there's a scale I use with folks, one to five levels of disclosure. And so level five is really intimate and level one is how's the weather. So, and so if I'm starting to climb the ladder and I don't necessarily know what a two, three and four, but you know, you can tell the difference between four and one mm -hmm. and I'm doing that too much. I'm trying to create intimacy and it's a false intimacy. Mm -hmm. I'm trying, it can be topics about, you know, some of the ones of they're vulnerable in the sense of, um, this is what happened in my divorce. Mm -hmm. These are all the details. That's too much too soon. Or asking someone else a vulnerable question. One of the worst ones mm -hmm. I can't stand is why are you still single? And I know folks should know not to do that, but it still happens. I know this because clients tell me it happens. So please don't do that anybody because it sounds like you're being sincere with it, mm -hmm. but you're not, you're putting the other person on the spot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, asking someone something that's really vulnerable from their standpoint, they may not like that. Yeah. It's not a way to connect. Mm -hmm. So it's any topic, whatever that could be, you know, that, that someone you know, is awkward with, the other thing when it comes to teasing, I have a rule of thumb. And some folks still do this. When you tease someone, if it's something they cannot change immediately, don't tease them. Mm. You know, the size, you know, their whatever, facial features. I mean, you would think folks wouldn't do this and stuff. But sometimes folks get nervous and they do, do so they think it's funny. Mm. Like, it's not funny. Now, this may seem obvious, but we're looking for stuff that when I get nervous, see, I don't think as much. Mm -hmm. And when I get nervous, I tend to like just kind of react. It's those things we're trying to guard against. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about oversharing, you also mean just going in a direction that isn't appropriate at the mm -hmm. time. Appropriate is, you know, you have different definitions. But I like that. Not saying something that somebody can't change what that I mean that's that's really good in all aspects of life to, to you know to remember that the other 
I think in our age group, what we tend to do and sometimes overshare is medical things or what's wrong with us. Mm. Or, you know, you, you fall into, yeah, all of a sudden, oh, my arthritis, this. And I, I it, haven't heard that one as much. That's good. That's good to know. <laughs> but, that, but that would be. I think they need to be aware because you you can fall into that so easily, and it's a real it's it's a turn off you know on certainly early on in one one way or the other. So I think the biggest turn off of that is when the person's listening is is that I don't know what you're doing about it. So if you're someone I might be interested in and this is what you're telling me about, I'm more interested in in the plan you've got or the solution, as in why are you sharing this with me versus surely you have a plan or a way to cope with this. I mean unless it something that someone needs to share early on to make a decision or relationship, but that's fairly rare. True. And the other, other topics that I've had come up on other shows, is like, you know, like drug addiction or alcohol use, not hopefully not currently, <laughs> but, but stuff about your past that really is the, the, the layers of the onion are, are just way deeper than, than talking about that right away. So let me, let me get to uh, number two, the other big offense, humble bragging is one of the huge mistakes. Why is that? And what is humble bragging? But humble bragging is where it's called a one-up position. It's where I make it a point where no matter how it goes, either I've got the last word, you know, you did something over here, well, I did a little bit better. Um, and you tell a story about this. That reminds me of the time when I did this over here. And it, it's like a, it's a subtle kind of a redirect, to make it a point to emphasize that I did something just as good, maybe a little bit better. And it's like, I can't let the other person have their moment yeah. where they were the hero or they were the hero of the story or, and, you know, it's not, it, it, what happens is it starts to accumulate and the other person, especially a man starts to go, this is no fun sharing because everything I do, I'm generalizing, no matter what I do, she's done it yeah. or she's done it better or her father's done it and he's done it better. And it's, <laughs> it, it gets to be tiresome. It does. It does get to be tiresome. I think uh, what we also tend to, or what's easy to fall into, especially on first dates, and, and a lot of this humble bragging can be because you're nervous, which wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. That you just don't, yeah. And you want to make a good impression, so you're bragging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but I, from a woman's perspective, or from a woman's side, you know, talking about, oh yeah, I've been dating up all these dates, and you know, blah, 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 to where it's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm in demand. Uh, I've, I've heard that a bit and with men is, is the kind of the same, but more this, you know, this one, they didn't look like their picture or, or, you know, they just weren't what I thought, or, you know, all these women, blah, blah, blah. They're, they're they would be so lucky if I gave them a second date. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but that attitude is often brought to a first date with online dating. Have you found that? Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. I mean, the simple answer is if you're saying something bad about someone else, the person across from you is going to think you're going to say it about them because at some point you will. At some point you will say it about them. And they know this. And it's not like we're having a moment and I'm talking bad about other people. It is that folks, that doesn't, that doesn't make them feel comfortable. In fact, one of the signs of confidence is, is that I don't have to put people down, even if they've wronged me or even if they've cheated me. And especially as this gets into exes, you know, the, our ex-spouses are, is that, yes, it's, it's easy to be hurt and bitter and stuff, but you, know, you wouldn't say this. But inside, if I'm sitting there with someone and, I know, and they're telling something, I'm like, who cares? I don't mean it's a put down, but I'm like, seriously, does the other person care? Yeah. Um, and as, as, I don't know what to say, but if they don't care, in other words, if it's not fun, helpful, light, then we're just dumping stuff on them. Mm -hmm. And that's not the side of them. I want them to, uh, the side of yourself. I want them to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you certainly don't want to make, you know, build yourself up or how great you are or how in demand you are. The other person needs to figure that out all on their own. <laughs> and I think that's where you know, you, maybe out of nerves, maybe out of nervousness or out of wanting to sell yourself, you make that mistake. And I think that's really something, something to be aware of. Uh, there, there's one more here. Well, the third and big one, again, seems so obvious. Minding your manners. Yes. But primarily where you harp on this here, and, and I totally agree, 
it is the phone. It is so annoying the way, you know, we utilize this when we're out on a date. Yes. So I, I'm just, pa- I'm pausing because I'm picturing being on a date. Someone's got their phone up. Because part of that is, is that we get used to it. it's nervous, it's a nervous habit after a while. Mm-hmm. And because we have phones, we don't have to be bored. And so, I mean, I do it too. We all do someplace, pull the phone up. I'm sitting and waiting on something. Why not look at the phone versus sit here and look at the wall for 10, 15 minutes in the doctor's office? Get that. But if we take it with us and we go in there with that attitude, which is just normal, I get that. It is going to come up. We're going to be likely to do stuff. So if, if I can get a woman or man, but especially a woman to walk in whenever date is, and her idea is my undivided attention is toward him. Doesn't mean I stare him down the whole time. Doesn't mean I, everything that says is wonderful. No, it'd be better if you had an opinion on something. You know, if, as long as it's authentic with you. But being there in the moment mm-hmm. is actually going to make you more appealing than anything else. I mean, you and I talk about women smiling, v- very helpful with that. We've even got research to back that up. But being there, even if it's not as fascinating as you would think, even if that's the thing that will help a man see you and experience you. And the idea is for that to be all the time, not just on a date. Because mm-hmm. if you're going to turn it on on a date and then cut it off, you're going to be in trouble. Mm-hmm. Because there's going to be times it's going to be hard to do this. Yeah. Well, but you're right. Put the phone down. as you're saying this. I'm thinking some way it was practical advice. Like, like you said, uh, obvious. I told the guy, I said, cut the phone off. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? I said, literally, cut the phone off, put it in your pocket. If you can't do it, leave it in the car. Right. What did it leave it in the car? I mean, I knew him. I could talk like this because he was asking. I said, I said, the problem solved. Mm-hmm. Well, then what do I do? Well, you look at her. I, you know, this sounds silly, I realize, but he was so used to the phone. It, it, some people, that's where we're talking about this. People don't even realize what they're doing. That that's that's where it comes in, where you just like, what I'm right here, you know something must be a lot more interesting if you keep having to check mm-hmm. on, on the phone or if you even text how you know without oh. for just for no reason all of a sudden without explaining why and heaven forbid answer a call i mean and this happens all the time i hear this all the time especially when women uh answer and maybe it was set up like that or, or a, a kid call, oh i have to take this call because it's you know it's my child or i, I get it you want to take call, calls from children but at our age, they're usually grown. They can't wait an hour to call you after you get back. These are just things that are such big mistakes. It can totally turn somebody off unnecessarily, right? And they don't, and, and to your point is, unless there's a good reason, if it's a small child, someone's sick, I mean, we're, we're not throwing common sense out, but that opportunity on the date, I mean, first date, second, third, that opportunity to give undivided attention, it, it is nice. It's good manners. Yeah. But that has such an impact on how the person sees you. Yeah. Because, you know, I get a lot of stuff from women. What should I say? What can I? And I'm fine with doing those things. But I always tell them, I'm like, have fun with this. But this alone is not going to help you. Right. That this is fun. So Because they say, what do I say next? I'm, I'm like, there's no end to the things I could tell you. But it's more when you're authentic. And you're there in the moment. It's not going to matter as much what you should say. Yeah. It's not going to be. And so let's put the phone down or whatever it is that's distracting you. I said, that's going to do more than anything else I can suggest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, if you absolutely have to have the phone next to you, I don't know how important you are, what you're doing. Maybe you're a surgeon or, you know, whatever. But at least give an explanation as to, look, I'm really sorry. I wish I could put this away. There is something I may need to respond to. I just want you to know that ahead of time. Otherwise, don't look at that thing. I, I get very offended by it. Uh, I, I like I like cut it off. The ones that will, because I mean, for an hour and a half, two hours, yeah. what is it? Again, short of surgery, short <laughs> of, but, but even that's rare. I mean, that's so rare. Like I'm on call for surgery. That is. Yeah, right. I, I was whatever, but be, or a fireman. I mean, there's rare things, but other than that, cut the phone off. Right. It shouldn't be on a date if you have something going. If you yes, have yes. I mean, it's. Because I, I think in terms like it, like when I tell someone, like if you've got this big investment and you've got this idea and someone's coming in to give you money, cut your phone off. So you would with that. You wouldn't be texting and stuff. Here's someone that's going to spend all this money. I go, this isn't that different. Mm-hmm. But if you're thinking, like, oh, someone will just keep coming along, you never know yeah. which person is going to be the one that's going to be a great fit. Right. It's not yeah. like we get to go to Walmart and just I'll have one of those. It doesn't work like that. But folks do that. When, you know, phone stuff or busy or got to make a call. I'm like, 
someone wonderful does not pop in your life every day. Right. Exactly. I know, again, it sounds like something that should be so obvious, but it's not. People do this all the time. So if it's, if it's been done to you, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. If you're the one doing it, think about really how annoying this is. And quite fr frankly, how rude you are. You are saying that there's something more important going on right here than what's right in front of you. So I, I get it why this would be under the top, you know, three uh, first date mistakes. Uh, Bob, we're coming to the end. Is there anything else you want to add on this? So when I think about a first date, the only goal of that is to get a second date, mm -hmm. not see if he's marriage material or what his character is or what. I mean, if you look for those things, you're not going to be yourself. See, I want you to have a second, third date again, so you can decide whether you want to keep him or not. And same for you men, vice versa. So on the first day, what I'm asking someone to do is let it be all about the other person. Mm -hmm. And at least you're showing them that you can do this. We're not promising to do this all the time, but it's all about them. You're interested in them. You're much more likely to come across in a way that you're going to get offered second and third dates. Then you can decide once you get to know him, whether he's a good fit for you or not. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Bob, thank you again for your time. Uh, great discussion. I, I think, um, yeah, we, we need to we need to be aware of these things. We don't want to make these mistakes, especially unnecessarily. So I will link to all of your information to relationship headquarters. You can certainly uh, contact Bob there if you're in need of some one on one dating advice. He's great to work with. <laughs> and Bob, I look forward to seeing you again soon on Second Act TV. Thanks, Locke. It's nice being here again. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. The button is right here. Just click on through to YouTube. And when you see the little bell right next to the subscribe button, hit that too, and we'll notify you every time we launch a new video. See you next time.